Tony, you in there? Hi, Tony here, welcome back. Now, a few weeks ago, I made a first impressions video of the showy Glamster because it arrived during the middle of lockdown and I didn't have the opportunity to ride in it. There's a link to that video in the end credits. But since then, I have had the opportunity to do some PPE and food bank deliveries for a couple of charities on the bike. And obviously now restrictions have eased very slightly in the UK, which means that I'm able to get out and ride. So I thought this was a perfect opportunity to bring you the follow up part two to that review. Now that I've had a chance to wear the helmet out on the bike. Now, I thought I'd break this video down into four constituent parts. So I'll look at comfort, vision, ventilation and noise. In terms of comfort, I'll open with the fit and the helmet is a standard showy fit. Despite it being a more compact size, the actual fit is spot on with every other showy that I've tried. So if you know exactly what size you are in a showy, you don't have any worries of getting one of these helmets in that same size. No need to size up or size down. Now, when I first saw the helmet, it looked like it may not be much room in the chin. But in my first review, and certainly when riding it, I proved that that's not the case. There's plenty of room in the chin. It is comparable with my RYD, if not maybe a little bit more spacious. So I have no issues with the, my face touching the chin bar, which I have had on some other helmets. I particularly like the padding around the ear cups. It gives a really nice, snug, secure fit. And the section that sits underneath your ears, I think has a lot to do with helping with sound isolation. But we'll touch on that later on. I also fitted the chin curtain, which I think helps with the sound insulation as well. But it also, for me, just stopped my beard from poking out of the bottom of the helmet. So overall, it's a really nice place to put your head. It's very comfortable for all day rides and the showy quality really does shine through. Vision, and this is where the retro styling of this helmet really does help out. All round vision is excellent. The wide aperture offers fantastic peripheral vision and shoulder checks are easy because of the cutback size. The narrow chin bar is hardly noticeable and even when looking down at the clocks, it doesn't get in the way. In terms of overall vision, I would put this helmet not far off the bell bullet as an example. The pin lock insert is obviously visible, but it's wide enough not to cause any problems. In fact, the only issue I had with the pin lock was getting a good seal on the visor. It did require a little bit of fiddling. Overall, the vision is excellent. So if you feel a little bit claustrophobic in a standard helmet, or if you're looking to move from an open face, then the Glampster is definitely worth a look. Ventilation. The airflow on the helmet is pretty good. You don't get a full blast like I've experienced on some helmets, but it is a nicely controlled piece of ventilation. On very warm days or in hot climates, you may wish for a bit more direct airflow, but the flip side is that I think this is a more suitable helmet for all year round use. The chin vents, as I mentioned in the first video, offer a screened input, which allows the air to circulate inside the helmet. It's enough for cooling and keeping the visor clear, but if you're looking for tons of air blasting in, this is not the helmet for you. The top vent offers a decent amount of air in and you can feel that cooling effect. The action for opening and closing the vent is easy, but I did find that my vent became a little bit sticky and harder to open and close after a few rides. Um, a little bit of lubrication sorted that out, so it's not really a big issue, but I thought it's something that I should mention. Okay, now onto noise, and I've left this till last, but to be honest, on my previous helmets reviews, it's normally one of the first questions that people ask. It is a very subjective question too. There are a lot of variables at stake. Uh, there's things like how the helmet fits you, what clothing you're wearing, what bike you're riding. So what one person would see as a noisy helmet, somebody else would see as acceptable. I know I tried helmets that people have said are exceptionally quiet and I found them not to be. But the good news is I found the helmet to be pretty good in this respect, both on naked and fared bikes. It was stable and relaxing to ride in. The noise that is apparent emanates largely from the visor. I experienced a light wind noise, not a whistle, nothing annoying, just general wind noise. It was more noticeable on shoulder checks and when my head was turned, but it is there nonetheless. I also rode with and without earplugs, and I was surprised how good it was without. 
I rode for about 45 minutes without and I had no problem, whereas some other retro helmets I've tried drove me mad after about 200 yards. With earplugs in, as I would always recommend, it was a pleasure to ride in. Overall, I would class this as a quiet helmet. Not the quietest, certainly, but it is up there. So my summary verdict after covering about 700 miles in the helmet is that it is indeed a very good helmet. It has the build quality you'd expect from Shoei, but with a nice paired back simple design, and I think it works on a wide range of styles of bike. I think it's reasonably priced. You can pick up one of the plain colors for £359, and I put a link in the description where you can go away and have a look at that. There were a couple of small niggles for me. The sticky top vent cover was a bit of a pain, but not really much of an issue. And I think the visor mounting is a little bit unnecessarily fiddly. But having said that, once you've got it in position, you don't need to touch it again. I would really like to have a tinted visor on it, but the CPB1 tinted visors seem to be pretty hard to come by. I don't know if that's just a supply issue. I'm hoping that they do release one of the transitions visors for that helmet because I've got that on my RYD and it's been absolutely brilliant. I absolutely love that. And if they launch that for the Glampster, I would certainly pick one of those up straight away. And apologies, although I'm not that worried at the moment, but I've not been able to ride it in the rain. We just haven't had any rain here in my part of the UK for a good few weeks. So if I get an opportunity to do that, I will do that and I'll report back. I'll put a sticky comment on this video uh, with my views of what it's actually like to wear in the wet. So if you want a classic, simple looking helmet, but with modern safety and functionality, then the showy glimpse that is definitely one for you to go and try. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Just looking ahead a little bit on the channel, now that lockdown seems to be easing a little bit, I'm going to be doing something with the Insta One 360 camera, so I'm quite excited to have a play with that and show you what that can do. Uh, hopefully there'll be some more bike reviews once those manufacturers start to get back up and running and, and get the press fleets out. And there'll be some more clothing reviews coming through as well. I'm hoping to throw in a little bit of touring and a few other different pieces into the mix. So keep them peeled. And if you want to get notifications, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell. And you'll see those as they come through. And all that leaves me to say is thanks for watching. Take care. Ride safe. Stay safe. And I'll see you soon. Bye.